why Jesus had to meet Moses and Elijah at the Mount of Transfiguration. The encounter between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, which is known as the Transfiguration, holds a profound significance. There are places on earth that exude a supernatural aura, where the boundary between our world and the divine seems to blur momentarily. The Transfiguration is undeniably one of those mystical biblical stories which hold a profound impact on everyone who follows Jesus. In the New Testament, this event stands out as a uniquely transcendent experience. Mount Tabor, in Hebrew Har Tabor, is located in the Lower Galilee, Israel, at the eastern end of the Jezreel Valley, just 18 kilometers west of the Sea of Galilee. It was on this mountain top where Jesus had to meet Elijah and Moses. They had a conversation that lasted for hours, and as if everything was over after they were carried away again, another unthinkable event happened. Jesus, with his three accompanied disciples, namely James, his brother, John, his best friend, and Peter, to whom he said he would build his church, and the kingdom of hell could not overcome it, were also engulfed by the clouds. That's not all. Then there was a big voice that came from it, saying, This is my beloved son, so you all should listen to him. Wow, what a day. You see, sometimes some place on earth feels unreal. If you have walked alone on any subway, you will understand this. Some places don't. This is exactly what happened. Even Peter could not hold his peace. He wanted to make three shelters there, he said. One for Jesus, one for Elijah, and also for Moses. But again, Jesus warned him. He asks them never to share this with anyone until his death and resurrection. It felt as though, for a brief moment, the line separating our earthly realm from the celestial dissolved. How did Peter, John, and James recognize Moses and Elijah during the transfiguration of Jesus? Before we answer the question of how Peter knew it was Moses and Elijah with Jesus during that glorious event, we need to understand what led up to this experience. Luke places the transfiguration eight days after an intense ministry and teaching cycle. The twelve were sent out to preach, the five thousand fed, the confession of Peter, and teaching about the cost of those who follow Jesus. Oftentimes in the Gospels we see Jesus take time with his disciples in prayer after such concentrated periods of ministry. This prayer time is the setting of the transfiguration of Jesus in Luke 9, Matthew 17, and Mark 9. It was, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. His robe became white and glistening. B29. The word glistening literally means emitting light, which suggests a brilliant flashing light. Now that is a glorious scene. This incredible experience doesn't end there. The trio of disciples saw two men talking with Jesus, Moses and Elijah. But how did Peter, and presumably, the other two disciples know it was Moses and Elijah who were talking with Jesus. Some have commented that it was their appearance, with Moses looking like Charleston Heston, long white beard, and Elijah looking like an older and hairier John the Baptist. Maybe, but there might be more at work here to aid us in understanding how they were identified. First of all, all three Gospels place the revelation of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God eight days prior to the transfiguration. The key dynamic in this professional revelation is the identity of Jesus revealed by the Father, not put together by the intellect of Peter. The identity of Moses and Elijah at the transfiguration of Jesus could have been revealed in the same way as the identity of Jesus was, through the revelation of the Father. Second, and more probable, the identity of the two men talking with Jesus was discovered as they talked with the Lord. The Gospel of Luke is the only witness to what the two men were talking about with Jesus, the departure of Jesus. The central term decease, NKJV, or departure, ESV, is the Greek word exodos. This means that the conversation between Moses who led the people of Israel in an exodus from Egypt, and Elijah, who departed in his exodus from life in a fiery chariot, talked with Jesus about his coming, exodus in his death on the cross, and resurrection from the dead. 
This is how Peter most likely recognized that it was Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. What an incredible experience of seeing the glory of God with Christ at the center and beloved saints with him. Moses. Moses is known for receiving the Ten Commandments directly from God on Mount Sinai. These commandments, constituting the foundation of Jewish law and morality, are revered as the cornerstone of the Torah, the sacred text of Judaism. Thus, Moses is deeply intertwined with the Torah, and his name evokes reverence and authority among the Jewish people. Furthermore, Moses' life was marked by extraordinary encounters with the divine. From the burning bush where God spoke to him, to the parting of the Red Sea, Moses was chosen by God to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and guide them to the Promised Land. His close relationship with God, marked by moments of intimate communication and miraculous interventions, cemented his status as a revered figure in Jewish tradition. Now let's fast forward to the end of Moses' life. According to the book of Deuteronomy, Moses died before reaching the Promised Land, as a consequence of a divine decree. However, the circumstances surrounding his death are shrouded in mystery and wonder. The Bible tells us that God himself buried Moses in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, and no one knows the exact location of his grave. This act of God personally handling Moses' burial adds a layer of divine mystery to his departure from this world. Moreover, in the book of Jude in the New Testament, we find an intriguing reference to an altercation between the archangel Michael and Satan over the body of Moses. Although the details are scarce, this passage suggests that even in death, Moses was the subject of divine contention and protection. So. Why did Moses meet Jesus before his death? Moses' presence alongside Jesus at the Transfiguration signifies the continuity and fulfillment of the law. Just as Moses received the law from God on Mount Sinai, Jesus embodies the fulfillment of that law and its ultimate purpose. Moses' appearance at this pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry underscores the divine continuity and fulfillment found in Jesus as the culmination of God's redemptive plan. Elijah, a prominent prophet in Israel's history, was known for his bold confrontation of idolatry and his unwavering devotion to the true God. One of his most famous demonstrations of God's power occurred during a showdown with the prophets of Baal and Asherah, arranged by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. The challenge was to see whose deity would respond with fire to consume a sacrificial offering Despite the prophets of Baal's fervent pleas, their gods remained silent. In contrast, when Elijah called upon the Lord, fire descended from heaven, consuming not only the sacrifice but also the altar itself, affirming the supremacy of the God of Israel over all others. Elijah's fearless commitment to God made him a revered figure among the Israelites. His ministry was characterized by miraculous deeds, including the raising of the dead, provision during times of famine, and divine intervention in battles. However, despite his significant role, Elijah's story took an extraordinary turn towards the end of his life. Instead of experiencing death like other mortals, Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind 
accompanied by a chariot of fire. This dramatic departure solidified Elijah's status as one of the greatest prophets in Jewish history. Now the reason why Elijah met Jesus before his death is multifaceted. Firstly, Elijah's appearance alongside Moses at the Mount of Transfiguration signified the continuity of God's plan of salvation. Just as Moses represented the law, Elijah represented the prophets. Their presence affirmed Jesus as the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets, as he himself declared, Matthew 5.17. Secondly, Elijah's unique experience of being taken up to heaven without experiencing death made him a symbol of the resurrection and eternal life. By appearing with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah likely served to foreshadow Jesus' own resurrection and glorification. Moreover, Elijah's presence may have comforted Jesus as he faced his impending death, reminding him of the victory over death that awaited him. In essence, Elijah's meeting with Jesus before his death underscored the continuity of God's redemptive plan, affirmed Jesus' identity as the fulfillment of Scripture, and provided a glimpse of the resurrection and eternal life that Jesus would bring through his sacrificial death and glorious resurrection. The Transfiguration event holds deep significance beyond just a change in Jesus' appearance. It serves as a powerful affirmation of Jesus' divine nature and his pivotal role in the relationship between God and humanity. Firstly, the Transfiguration reveals Jesus' divine side in a remarkable way. The radiant transformation of Jesus on the mountain peak wasn't merely a visual spectacle, it was a profound manifestation of his true nature as the Son of God. In this moment, Jesus transcended his human form to display his divine glory, showing his intimate connection with the divine realm. Moreover, the transfiguration underscores Jesus' continuity with past leaders like Moses and Elijah. These revered figures from Israel's history symbolize the law and the prophets respectively, representing the foundational elements of God's covenant with his people. By appearing alongside Moses and Elijah, Jesus affirms his role as the fulfillment of the law and the culmination of prophetic expectation. He doesn't abolish the teachings of Moses or the messages of the prophets, but fulfills them in his person and mission. The transfiguration, therefore, serves as a bridge between the old and the new, highlighting the seamless continuity of God's plan of salvation. It shows that Jesus isn't an isolated figure, but stands within the rich tapestry of Israel's history and divine revelation. His divine nature and unique place in God's narrative of redemption are unmistakably affirmed through this extraordinary event. Elijah was a prophet on a mission to bring the people of Israel back to God. But what's the deal with the transfiguration? It's more than just Jesus changing his appearance, it's a big deal. The Transfiguration shows Jesus in his divine form, connected to God and carrying on the work of past leaders like Moses and Elijah. For Peter, James and John, it was like a sneak peek into the awesome things to come. So why pick this mountain? Mountains in the Bible aren't just hills. They're special places where God shows up big time. Remember Moses and Mount Sinai. That's where God gave him the Ten Commandments, laying down some serious rules. Fast forward to the New Testament, and Jesus' transfiguration happened on a mountain too. The mountain of transfiguration is a big deal for a few reasons. First, it's like a divine stamp of approval. A voice from heaven confirms that Jesus is God's son, and his teachings are super important. Second, it's a place where Jesus' followers get a deeper understanding of who he is and what he's all about. Third, it connects the dots between the Old Testament and Jesus' mission, showing that he's the real deal. Why did Jesus have to shine like a star on this mountain? Well, it was a big moment. It gave Peter, James and John a glimpse of how awesome Jesus was before he was even born. Plus, it's like a heads up for them, hinting at what's to come in the future. So, what happened up there? Jesus, Moses, and Elijah spoke about Jesus' upcoming journey to Jerusalem, where he'd suffer, die, and then come back to life. After the mountain experience, Jesus and his disciples went back down, ready to face the challenges ahead. 
The transfiguration wasn't just a flashy show, it was a prep session for what Jesus was about to do. It reminded everyone that Jesus is the answer to humanity's biggest problem and the fulfillment of ancient promises. The transfiguration showed Jesus in his divine glory, giving us a taste of what's to come in the future. It wasn't just a cool trick, it was a promise of a transformed world where Jesus reigns supreme. And with God's voice backing him up, it's clear that Jesus' teachings are what everyone needs to survive. So let's listen up and follow his lead. What significance does the transfiguration hold for non-Christians? For non-Christians, the significance of the transfiguration lies in its universal themes and spiritual insights that transcend specific religious beliefs. While the event holds profound meaning within Christian theology, its broader implications can resonate with individuals of various faith backgrounds or even those without religious affiliations. At its core, the Transfiguration embodies themes of spiritual transformation, enlightenment and the pursuit of divine truth. The image of Jesus radiating with divine glory atop the mountain serves as a powerful symbol of human potential for transcendent experiences and personal growth. It suggests that moments of illumination and awakening are accessible to all individuals, regardless of their religious identity. Furthermore, the Transfiguration underscores the idea of interconnectedness and unity among diverse spiritual traditions. The presence of figures like Moses and Elijah alongside Jesus highlights the shared aspirations for spiritual enlightenment and the pursuit of truth across different religious contexts. This inclusivity invites non-Christians to reflect on the common threads that unite humanity's spiritual journey and to recognize the value of diverse paths to enlightenment. Moreover, the Transfiguration offers a glimpse into the transcendent realm and the possibility of encountering the divine in ordinary human experiences. It invites non-Christians to contemplate moments of awe, wonder and beauty in the world around them as potential avenues for encountering the sacred. Overall, while the Transfiguration holds deep significance within Christian faith, its themes of spiritual transformation, unity and the pursuit of divine truth can inspire and resonate with individuals of all backgrounds, offering insights into the universal human quest for meaning and transcendence. Peter, James and John were not chosen by chance. They formed an inner circle within the larger group of disciples, often being closer to Jesus during critical moments in his ministry. This inner circle suggests a deeper level of trust and intimacy between Jesus and these three disciples. By selecting Peter, James and John as witnesses to this miraculous event, Jesus reinforced their faith and provided them with a unique encounter with the divine. But why these three disciples specifically? What was it about Peter, James and John that made them suitable candidates for this extraordinary experience? One reason could be their leadership potential. Peter in particular was often portrayed as a leader among the disciples, despite his impulsive nature. His confession of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, earned him praise from Jesus and indicated his leadership potential. Matthew 16, 16 to 19. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also prominent figures among the disciples, often accompanying Jesus on important occasions, Matthew 17, 1, Mark 14, 33. Their leadership qualities may have made them ideal candidates to witness the transfiguration and play key roles in the early Christian community. Another reason could be their proximity to Jesus. Throughout his ministry, Jesus formed close relationships with his disciples, but Peter, James and John seemed to enjoy a special closeness with him. They were present at pivotal moments in Jesus' life, such as the raising of Jairus' daughter and the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. This closeness may have allowed Jesus to trust them with the extraordinary revelation of his divine glory at the Transfiguration. Additionally, Peter, James and John were likely chosen for their faith. Despite their flaws and shortcomings, these disciples demonstrated a willingness to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. 
Peter in particular, showed great faith when he stepped out of the boat to walk on water, Matthew 14, 28, 31. James and John also exhibited faith when they left everything to follow Jesus, Matthew 4, 21 to 22. Their faithfulness and commitment to Jesus may have made them suitable witnesses to the transfiguration. Furthermore, Peter, James, and John played significant roles in the early Christian community. Peter emerged as a prominent leader among the apostles, preaching boldly on the day of Pentecost and playing a central role in the spread of the gospel, Acts 2, 14, 41, Acts 10, 34, 48. James, the brother of John, was one of the first disciples to be martyred for his faith, becoming a symbol of steadfastness and courage, Acts 12, 1 to 2. John, often referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved, went on to write several books of the New Testament and played a crucial role in shaping Christian theology. John 21, 20, 24, 1 John 4, 7, 21. Their leadership and influence in the early Christian community may have been foreshadowed by their selection as witnesses to the Transfiguration. The selection of Peter, James, and John for the Transfiguration was not arbitrary. It was a deliberate choice by Jesus. Aside from the biblical accounts found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is no direct historical evidence of the Transfiguration as described in Christian scripture. The event is primarily understood within the context of religious tradition and belief rather than verifiable historical documentation. However, it's essential to note that the absence of historical evidence does not necessarily discount the significance of the Transfiguration within Christian theology. For believers, the event holds profound spiritual and theological meaning, serving as a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry and affirming his divine nature. Historically, scholars may analyze the biblical texts and their cultural, literary, and theological contexts to better understand the significance and interpretation of the transfiguration within early Christian communities. Additionally, Archaeological research in the Holy Land may provide insights into the geographical settings mentioned in the biblical accounts, contributing to our understanding of the cultural and historical background of the narratives. Ultimately, while there may not be empirical evidence of the transfiguration beyond the biblical texts, its significance lies in its role within Christian faith and its enduring impact on religious belief and practice. Have you ever experienced a shift in your spirit upon reaching a particular place? Share your experience by commenting below this video using the comment section. Thanks for watching.